All right, so last night, Michael Penix was drafted by the Atlanta Falcons with the eighth overall pick, which was uh, as big of a surprise as we've ever seen in a draft because, of course, they went out and paid Kirk Cousins $180 million, and now you're adding a quarterback with pick number eight. Uh, also, you know, Cousins was reportedly not aware of this, you know, the fact that th- this had happened. So, uh, you know, a lot of stuff to get into. We're going to get into all of it. Um, you know, I think the first thing to start off with is the Kirk Cousins contract itself, because I-, I hear a lot of people discussing this and quite frankly, just saying wrong things. People, for some reason, can't seem to understand the co- uh, football contracts, which I always say, go to over the cap. Uh, it's a great tool. It'll make it very clear how these things work. You know, according to Over the Cap, if you were to cut Kirk Cousins after two years, people I've heard people say, "Well, it's basically a two-year deal." No, it isn't. If you cut him after the second year, there's twenty-five million dollars in dead cap. So that's not a, basically a two-year deal. You can get out of it after two years for sure, but that's still significantly hurting you in year three to the point where very good likely, very high likelihood that would be you're, you, you'd be paying the most money to Kirk Cousins out of anybody else in 2026 if you decide to cut him that year. So, you know, $25 million is not a little bit of money to spend. And I think that's part of the issue that people have with this situation of one of the main values you get by drafting a quarterback is that you can, you know, uh, get a rookie deal, which is incredibly valuable. Because even the Packers, you look at their situation, listen, they're not complaining. They got Jordan Love, they're happy. But at the same time, they essentially did not get any completely cheap production out of Jordan Love. They, they signed him to a two-year deal prior to his you know, first starting year. So they kind of did a good job there to get an extra cheap year. But for the most part, uh, the cheap year still isn't like a, a bargain bin year. And they're going to have to pay him big money the following year if they want to you know keep him. Whereas for someone like uh, you know Michael Penix, who you know, uh, it's a similar situation. And now, not the exact same situation, because if you decide to have Cousins play for the next two years, Penix takes over in year three, you do cut Kirk Cousins and take on to 25 million in dead cap. Um, The, uh, you know, you're in a situation where, okay, it's still cheaper than your average quarterback. It's still going to be a reasonable quarterback salary, especially when the cap's going to keep going up. So in a couple of years, it'll be even better than that. You will then get Penix's fourth year, which will be kind of a bargain bin year. And then you get the fifth year option, which isn't cheap. Uh, fifth year options are somewhat expensive, but you are still getting a, uh, a, a discounted price for a quarterback. So that's the logic behind it. Um, I've heard a lot of people comparing the Kirk Cousins deal and the Aaron Rodgers deal. You know, this is the situations. Uh, a lot of people are kind of saying, well, it's different because of this reason and it's different because of that reason. I'm going to be honest. It's the exact same thing. It just is. It's the exact same thing. Um, it's not the exact same thing. There are differences involved, but it's essentially the same line of thinking, which is we have a quarterback that we don't know how long he's going to play. We don't know how good he is. So we're just going to get a player we like and a quarterback who we can hope to build for the future. But it's the same logic. Yes, there are small differences. Yes, uh, you're picking at eight instead of at 26. Uh, yes, the quarterback you're drafting is three years older than the quarterback the Packers drafted. All of that stuff is true. But I think if you like the Jordan Love pick, you should probably like this one. And if you dislike the Jordan Love pick, which was most of us, you should probably dislike this one. I think it's fair to even say, was the Jordan Love decision, uh, uh, you know, the correct one at the time? Obviously, it worked out. You got Jordan Love. But I still would say, in that situation, I still think the Packers should have gone out and gotten T. Higgins instead. I think they would have been better off uh, in the short term with that. Yes, you know, again, if you draft a quarterback who's a franchise quarterback, it's worth it. But that doesn't, you know, no way to know if that happens. Because that's another aspect in all of this is... I think people are kind of saying, well, you do this, you get a great quarterback. Listen, there is no evidence to support that letting a quarterback sit uh, means they're more likely to succeed than if they don't. In fact, quarterbacks who do not play right away when entering the league uh, that were, you know, uh, high drafted players, guys drafted in the first half of the first round, uh, guys who don't play right away are m- less likely to succeed actually than guys who played right away. Guys who play day one are, they have a higher hit rate. So it's not massively higher and, and there could be 
just valid reasons for that, right? Like, for example, uh, a quarterback doesn't play right away because they're not good enough to play right away. But, you know, uh, just because you, you said, that, I don't know if that actually gives you a higher likelihood of succeeding. And it feels a little bit like the Falcons kind of, like, you know, they they, they mentioned, the, the front office mentioned the Green Bay Packers when they, you know, were in this press conference, which might have just been a way to justify it. Maybe they would have done it anyway. But you have to wonder, like, if Jordan Love sucked, would you have still done this move? Like, it, did you just do this move because it worked for Jordan Love? I don't know. Uh, it, it's a weird situation for me personally. Um, but again, kind of going back to the whole, you know, uh, where do we want to go next with this, I, I guess? You know, uh, l- let's talk about the the Kirk Cousins factor in all of this. Because to me, I think you can justify this move if you're a Falcons fan. Falcons fans are not. I, I was looking on the Falcons subreddit. They were super pissed off. So this was not this is not a situation where the fan base loves it, but people around hate it, like the Lions draft last year. Uh, from what I've seen, the Falcons fans really dislike it. Th- to me, the Kirk Cousins thing is the interesting factor. I actually think drafting Michael Penix is not the mistake here. That's kind of how I view this, which it maybe seems a little bit strange, but uh, to me... I think that's fine. I think Penix is a great player. Getting him at eight works. Uh, the mistake is get, signing Kirk Cousins then. If you wanted to draft a quarterback, then draft a quarterback and trade up if you have to. Did something ha- you know? It's not like Michael Penix played football uh, since Kirk Cousins has, uh, you know, uh, it's not like P- Penix wasn't going to declare for the draft and then decided to after you signed Kirk Cousins or anything like that. Uh, granted, you didn't know Penix was going to fall to eight. But the guy was projected to go in round two. And, and while I don't think that would have happened, I think he would have, you know, there are, are reports, which always feel very intentional uh, that these reports get leaked. But uh, I actually believe it was Sean Payton who said that there were other teams trying to trade up for Penix. So, uh, which I don't think he was doing anything intentional. He just likes to talk. So uh, I think that it's very true that uh, Penix would not have lasted to round two or anything like that. But I, I doubt he would have been drafted before eight. Uh, and I think it would have been worth the risk to not go out and pay uh, Kirk Cousins, you know, essentially, you know, the next three years are going to be more or less guaranteed. Uh, I should say two and a half years are going to be more or less guaranteed. I think you could have done a better, you could have found a better bridge quarterback in this scenario. That's just how I view it. Um, But again, I I, I, I like Penix as a player. Um, But if you're going to go out and get him, why sign Kirk Cousins? I didn't love signing Kirk Cousins just in general because usually the way it works is Kirk Cousins makes it easier for you to get to the playoffs, but tougher for you to go on a deep playoff run because you're spending $45 million on Cousins. I do think that, uh, you know, it, it's it's a weird situation. Um, you know, I really like Penix as a player. I, I really do. People keep saying, oh, Penix is going to be 28 when Cousins' contract is up. I don't think Cousins is going to play for. I don't think they're signing him to play till he's uh, 39 uh, at this point. I think that they're clearly saying we may, gave you this deal, but you're not going to finish it. Um, which you know, so Penix might be 26, but hey, if he's good, he's good. Um, uh, you know, two more things I want to discuss. First, just pen, go back to Penix. I think one weird thing about this as well is comparing this to Jordan Love. Jordan Love was such a, and I said it's the exact same thing earlier, uh, but it, there obviously are differences. And probably the biggest one for me is part of why Jordan Love fell in the draft was he was considered such a project. The physical tools were there, but he would just have such inconsistency in his game, which still did pop up at the NFL level, but he was he got consistently good towards the end of the season. And we expect to see, you know, the consistency has been a lot better than maybe we expected going in which part of that probably was sitting behind a Hall of Fame quarterback with a great head coach, a good offensive mind to kind of help him grow as a player. Um, Penix is not that. Penix is a pretty finished product. Uh, The main issue with Penix that people have is that A, he was kind of an older prospect, and B, that he had injury concerns, which none of which this is sitting behind Kirk Cousins is going to help with. So that's kind of why it's a little bit of a weird fit as well of what are you gaining from sitting him right away, I, I I don't think anything. I think that he would be just as good playing right now uh, as he would. Like, I don't think that's going to help him to sit right away. I, I just don't. Um, the other aspect, and probably the worst aspect of this for Atlanta, is they didn't tell Kirk Cousins about this, which, to be honest, almost borders on unethical. Uh, at the very least, it's kind of like a, a not good thing to do. Signing him to a deal, I'm sure that he thought when he signed the deal that he would have a chance to finish the deal. And even looking at it now, 
it feels like it's constructed in a way to try to get rid of him after two years because his cap hit is a lot lower the first two years. Now, like I said, some of that uh, would carry over to the third year, even if they cut him. But I think for Cousins, he's probably a little bit frustrated. I'm like, hey, I thought I was signing in this situation to try and win a Super Bowl. Like, that's that's probably part of the selling point of why I got here. And now uh, you went out and drafted a, a co- backup quarterback with the Denver 8 overall pick. That's not going to help Cousins as he is probably in his last couple years to really try and compete for a Super Bowl, um, you know, which is unfortunate uh, for him. And I could see, again, He's doing okay. You look at the numbers that he's making and you feel less bad for him. I get it. But still, uh, you know, I think that was an unfortunate situation uh, and it's something that didn't really have to do, in in my opinion. I think they could have, you know, could have not made this work. I I get it. You got to be ruthless sometimes in, in business and in football, but I don't know. I can certainly see him being very frustrated that, you know, they're not using that pick to help out the team right now. And it's kind of almost setting in stone, hey, we signed you to this deal. We probably said, hey, you know, there's a chance you're going to play to the end of it. You know, when you sign a deal that's not fully guaranteed, there's never a guarantee you're going to get all that money. But you usually hope there's a chance you can get all that money. And this almost feels like they're saying, no, we weren't even going to consider giving you all that money in the first place, uh, which I don't know what was going on in the meetings. I don't know what the selling point was. But it essentially feels like Cousins thought he was going to an all-in situation where he was going to have a chance to earn $180 million, And now he's kind of learned that that will not be probably what he's making. And this is not an all-in situation. And they didn't even tell him. That's the other weird thing. Why not tell him? Why not say, hey, there's a quarterback we really like. Uh, we're considering maybe going after him if he falls to us at 8 Cousins might not be happy, but I guarantee you he's going to be much more unhappy uh, if you you just draft it without telling him. The fact that they didn't tell him is insane. At least with the Packers and Jordan Love, they didn't tell Rodgers, but like it's possible they just didn't realize Love would still be there uh, at pick 26, and that's why they didn't tell him. Um, the for the for, for the Falcons, I mean, they knew Penix was going to be there. Everyone knew Penix was going to be there. So just a bizarre bizarre move. I you know it, there was kind of a half-hearted defense defense of the move in here as well. Because at the end of the day, the drafting Penix is not an issue. I don't hate drafting Penix. I, I disliked the Kirk Cousins signing. If you're going to draft Penix, to me to me that's the mistake is the Cousins signing, not the Penix pick. That's kind of how I view it. But yeah, those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.